And did you have a good time at Stratford? Yes. And yes. How long were you there? How many years were you there? Uh, well, just those two, and then uh, I went back in 81 and did um, when Hirsch was there. Uh, I did um, Bologna. Right. And what's your advice to young actors who find themselves in that sort of position where you absolutely do not get on with the director? What would you say? Well, I think, you know, it really depends on the circumstances. I mean, had I been younger, I guess, and had I been doing more work, I might have acquiesced. But I bloody well knew that if I didn't do Volumnia, I'd never get on the stage again, you know. Uh, so I went to uh, Hirsch, and because um, he'd been at a couple of rehearsals, and he said, um, uh, I said, well, do you think I'm that bad? And he said, no, you just need to let go a bit more. Uh, but it, it had been very confusing because uh, Brian had started off by, you know, telling me how much he hated his mother and why and so on and so on and so on. And he clearly wanted me to play her as a vixen, you know. And it, I just didn't see it that way. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Uh, then Tony uh, said, or not Tony, uh, but Hirsch said, well, you know, I hired you, so obviously I thought you could do it. Uh, and uh, so he said, um, I'm certainly not going to fire you, and I will tell Brian that I'm not, but I warn you that he will probably try to make your life pretty difficult. So, um, anyway, I stayed. And uh, he, uh, David, you know David Smuckler? Mm hmm, mm hmm. <laughs> well, uh, he had not been, uh, he had not been teaching there prior to this. But I had a, um, a lesson with him just just after this, and uh, I told him, you know, what had happened. So he said, um, well, I think we'll do a bit of breathing. <laughs> so we did a bit of breathing, and I was in floods of tears. And I, I, I don't ever remember crying like that. And. Uh, then it got better, and of, co of, of course, the day before we opened, um, Bedford cut the big speech that he had been telling me was the center of the, um <laughs> So, okay, let's get totally personal about this in that there you are working for decades, as it were, of accomplishment. And what is it about our profession that you end up at that point in your career, after so many years of work, being so vulnerable? You know, be t to be tossed up and down with a director's whim. Yeah, well... What does that I'm, make us I mean, as yeah, I, think he <laughs> yeah, I think he thinks he owns Stratford pretty well. Bedford. But that he should have such power over you. Yeah. I, I, speak, I mean, totally personally from because it happened to me with Hirsch. You know, yeah. Almost exactly the same stories. Yeah. I'm in a flood of tears because I yeah. don't know what's going on. Yeah. But that after so many decades of yeah. work, yeah. that you end up just being one more seemingly bauble at the end yeah. of the director's fingers. 
Why do we do this? I don't know, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And also on a, on a pers personal note, in terms of you who did so much in the, in the, you know, that pioneering time of the 50s here with the Crest and the, and the Repertory Theater and the, and the Straw Hat Players and early Stratford, to play such a central part, and then here you are off on the margin. I mean, how does that, how do you live with that? It's a form of injustice for me. Yeah, well, I mean, new people come along and they use the people they, they know. Mm. I mean, I'm sure if, I don't think there's anybody who's producing television these days who has any idea who I am or what I've done, you know. After all those years and all those yeah. films and all that yeah. television. And you see that as the way it is or cruel or? Well, yes, I mean, but what can, I know, what, what can one do about it? <laughs> Rage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if we can, let's talk a bit about your, your mother's family the gypsy background that's in mm -hmm. your family, because again, it's kind of an outsider's dream. And for me, the artist is, is always the outsider, yeah. as it were. Do you think that influenced you in any way? Uh, well, I don't, I don't know. You see, um, we were brought up really entirely by my father's family, because, um, Mother died a month after Donald was born, and um, so. Your mother was a gypsy from. Um, England. They came. English gypsies, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they'd lived. In, and the family had uh, lived in England for how many years? I'm not. I'm not even sure. Cer certainly, the generations from that picture out there. Uh, certainly going back to uh, Gypsy Sarah, they were, they were there, but how, how long before that, I am not absolutely sure, because the, um, A, I didn't see very much of my grandmother Chilcott. She came up once a week when we were kids. And, uh, you know, we'd have the midday meal and then go to school, and she'd be there when we get back. And then she um, then would go back to Toronto that night. They still had a, a streetcar that was going up and down to Newmarket from Toronto. But she must have been an outsider in a fairly wasp culture. Well, right? well exactly. And and I'm sure, you see, that, um, I'm sure that, I, I mean, my mother was beautiful, as you can see, but I never heard anybody ever say anything negative about her. She, I mean, she was perfect as far as Within your family, was. so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... I don't know a lot about my mother's side of the family at all. And they were all so busy trying to, you know, as um, first generation immigrants often are, about trying to fit in mm -hmm. and look like everybody else. If I were a producer and came to you and said, Barbara, I want to put on a production and I want you to be in it. You choose the play. What would you choose? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Had it been a few years ago, I'd have said I would really love to have another go at Cleopatra. But I think maybe it's a bit late for that. Uh, it's funny you should say that. I mean, it's interesting because, again, the your mother's blood, right? 
the outsider, the slightly yeah. exotic, and there's Cleopatra yeah. also in that. Yeah. In that, as you say, your mother, your yeah. your grandmother was always, uh, or your mother was always, sorry, your grandmother was always spoken well of. Yeah. Extremely beautiful woman. Yeah. There's Cleopatra, with yeah. all those qualities. Mm -hmm. Yes. Never thought of that. Hmm. Yeah. Did your grandmother keep asps? No, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> she had a lot of coppers, I remember. <laughs> Copper? No, yes. You know, copper pots and... Uh, right. She was always polishing them. A lot of interesting corners. Eh? Have you ever gone back to where where the uh, your mother's family were in Toronto? I where those know. pictures are from? I don't, I don't exactly know where it is. I know it's in the West End somewhere. Because they always, I mean, when they moved from tents, they right. moved first to Queen Street West. And then the only, I remember going with my mother to um, a house that they had lived in uh, on Runnymede. And then, and my mother was married from that house, I know. And Ab, her brother, uh, always lived in the West End, Ellis Avenue, you know. But exactly where this was. He said that it was Wilson Avenue, but it wasn't, see, the Wilson I think of is the one that's mm -hmm. up north. But, but of all the communities that must have been looked down on in Toronto oh at that yeah. time, I mean, the Irish were bad for one thing, yeah. but the gypsies. Yeah. Well, that picture of Ab with the little whip, you know, he said that um, when he was going to school, he used to have to stand in the, the corner of the schoolyard with this whip to keep the kids from attacking him. Wow. You know, gypsy, gypsy, live in a tent, have no money to pay the rent. Uh, and of course, you know, that they would be amongst if not the first uh, non-Anglo-Saxon immigrants at, at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Barbara. This has been a pleasure. Oh, well, I've enjoyed it too. Good. <laughs>